Welcome. This is the one year Bible reading for March 29th, and we begin today in Deuteronomy chapter 11. You must love the Lord your God and obey all his requirements, decrees, regulations, and commands. Keep in mind that I am not talking now to your children who have never experienced the discipline of the Lord your God or seen his greatness and his strong hand and powerful arm. They didn't see the miraculous signs and wonders he performed in Egypt against Pharaoh and all his land. They didn't see what the Lord did to his enemies, to the armies of Egypt, and to their horses and chariots, how he drowned them in the Red Sea as they were chasing you. He destroyed them, and they have not recovered to this very day. Your children didn't see how the Lord cared for you in the wilderness until you arrived here. They didn't see what he did to Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, the descendant of Reuben, when the earth opened up its mouth in the Israelite camp and swallowed them, along with their households and tents and every living thing that belonged to them. But you have seen the Lord perform all these mighty deeds with your own eyes. Therefore, be careful to obey every command I am giving you today, so you may have strength to go in and take over the land you are about to enter. If you obey, you will enjoy a long life in the land the Lord swore to give to your ancestors and to you, their descendants, a land flowing with milk and honey. For the land you are about to enter and take over is not like the land of Egypt from which you came, where you planted your seed and made irrigation ditches with your foot, as in a vegetable garden. Rather, the land you will soon take over is a land of hills and valleys with plenty of rain, a land that the Lord your God cares for. He watches over it through each season of the year. If you carefully obey all the commands I am giving you today, and if you love the Lord your God and serve him with all your heart and soul, then he will send the rains in their proper season, the early and late rains, so you can bring in your harvests of grain, new wine, and olive oil. He will give you lush pasture land for your livestock, and you yourselves will have all you want to eat. But be careful. Don't let your heart be deceived so that you turn away from the Lord and serve and worship other gods. If you do, the Lord's anger will burn against you. He will shut up the sky and hold back the rain, and the ground will fail to produce its harvests. Then you will quickly die in that good land the Lord is giving you. So commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these words of mine. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your foreheads as reminders. Teach them to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road, when you are going up to bed and when you are getting up. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates so that as long as the sky remains above the earth, you and your children may flourish in the land the Lord swore to give to your ancestors. So be careful to obey all these commands I am giving you. Show love to the Lord your God by walking in his ways and holding tightly to him. Then the Lord will drive out all the nations ahead of you, though they are much greater and stronger than you, and you will take over their land. Wherever you set your foot, the land will be yours. Your frontiers will stretch from the wilderness in the south to Lebanon in the north, and the, from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you, for the Lord your God will cause the people to fear and dread you, as he promised, wherever you go in the whole land. Look, today I am giving you the choice between a blessing and a curse. You will be blessed if you obey the commands of the Lord your God that I am giving you today, but you will be cursed if you reject the commands of the Lord your God and turn away from him and worship gods you have not known before. When the Lord your God brings you into the land and helps you take possession of it, you must pronounce the blessing at Mount Gerizim and the curse at Mount Ebal. These two mountains are west of the Jordan River, in the land of the Canaanites who live in the Jordan Valley, near the town of Gilgal, not far from the oaks of Moray. For you are about to cross the Jordan River to take over the land the Lord your God is giving you. When you take that land and are living in it, you must be careful to obey all the decrees and regulations I am giving you today. These are the decrees and regulations you must be careful to obey when you live in the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. You must obey them as long as you live. When you drive out the nations that live there, you must destroy all the places where they worship their gods, high on the mountains, up on the hills, and under every green tree. 
break down their altars and smash their sacred pillars, burn their Asherah poles and cut down their carved idols, completely erase the names of their gods. Do not worship the Lord your God in the way these pagan peoples worship their gods. Rather, you must seek the Lord your God at the place of worship he himself will choose from among all the tribes, the place where his name will be honored. There you will bring your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, your tithes, your sacred offerings, your offerings to fulfill a vow, your voluntary offerings, your offerings of the firstborn animals of your herds and flocks. There you and your families will feast in the presence of the Lord your God, and you will rejoice in all you have accomplished, because the Lord your God has blessed you. Your pattern of worship will change. Today all you are doing as you Please, all of you are doing as you please, because you have not yet arrived at the place of rest, the land the Lord your God is giving you as your special possession. But you will soon cross the Jordan River and live in the land the Lord your God is giving you. When he gives you rest from all your enemies and you're living safely in the land, you must bring everything I command you, your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, your tithes, your sacred offerings, and your offerings to fulfill a vow to the designated place of worship, the place the Lord your God chooses for his name to be honored. You must celebrate there in the presence of the Lord your God with your sons and daughters and all your servants. And remember to include the Levites who live in your towns, for they will receive no allotment of land along, among you. Be careful not to sacrifice your burnt offerings just anywhere you like. You may do so only at the place the Lord will choose within one of your tribal territories. There you must offer your burnt offerings and do everything I command you. But you may butcher your animals and eat their meat in any town whenever you want. You may freely eat the animals with which the Lord your God blesses you. All of you, whether ceremonially clean or unclean, may eat that meat, just as you now eat gazelle and deer. But you must not consume the blood. You must pour it out on the ground like water. But you may not eat your offerings in your hometown, neither the tithe of your grain and new wine and olive oil, nor the firstborn of your flocks and herds, nor any offering to fulfill a vow, nor your voluntary offerings, nor your sacred offerings. You must eat these in the presence of the Lord your God at the place he will choose. Eat them there with your children, your servants, and the Levites who live in your town, celebrating in the presence of the Lord your God in all you do. And be very careful never to neglect the Levites as long as you live in your land. When the Lord your God expands your territory as he has promised, and you have the urge to eat meat, you may freely eat meat whenever you want. It might happen that the designated place of worship, the place the Lord your God chooses for his name to be honored, is a long way from your home. If so, you may butcher any of the cattle, sheep, or goats the Lord has given you, and you may freely eat the meat in your hometown as I have commanded you. Anyone, whether ceremonially clean or unclean, may eat that meat just as you now do with gazelle and deer, but never consume the blood, for the blood is the life, and you must not com consume the life blood with the meat. Instead, pour out the blood on the ground like water. Do not consume the blood, so that all may go well with you and your children after you, because you will be doing what pleases the Lord. Take your sacred gifts and your offerings given to fulfill a vow to the place the Lord chooses. You must offer the meat and blood of your burnt offerings on the altar of the Lord your God. The blood of your other sacrifices must be poured out on the altar of the Lord your God, but you may eat the meat. Be careful to obey all my commands so that all will go well with you and your children after you, because you will be doing what is good and pleasing to the Lord your God. When the Lord your God goes ahead of you and destroys the nations then, and you drive them out and live in their land, do not fall into the trap of following their customs and worshiping their gods. Do not inquire about their gods, saying, How do these nations worship their gods? I want to follow their example. You must not worship the Lord your God the way the other nations worship their gods, for they perform for their gods every detestable act that the Lord hates. They even burn their sons and daughters as sacrifices to their gods. So be careful to obey all the commands I give you. You must not add anything to them or subtract anything from them. 
Luke chapter 8, beginning in verse 22. One day Jesus said to his disciples, Let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and started out. As they sailed across, Jesus settled down for a nap. But soon a fierce storm came down on the lake. The boat was filling with water, and they were in real danger. The disciples went and woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we're going to drown. When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and the raging waves. Suddenly the storm stopped and all was calm. Then he asked them, Where is your faith? The disciples were terrified and amazed. Who is this man, they asked each other. When he gives a command, even the wind and waves obey him. So they arrived in the region of the uh, Gerasenes, across the lake from Galilee. As Jesus was climbing out of the boat, a man who was possessed by demons came out to meet him. For a long time he had been homeless and naked, living in a cemetery outside the town. As soon as he saw Jesus, he shrieked and fell down in front of him. Then he screamed, Why are you interfering with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Please, I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had already commanded the evil spirit to come out of him. This spirit had often taken control of the man. Even when he was placed under guard and put in chains and shackles, he simply broke them and rushed out into the wilderness completely under the demon's power. Jesus demanded, What is your name? Legion, he replied, for he was filled with many demons. The demons kept begging Jesus not to send them into the bottomless pit. There happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding on the hillside nearby, and the demons begged him to let them enter into the pigs. So Jesus gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered into the pigs, and the entire herd plunged down the deep hillside into the lake and drowned. When the herdsmen saw it, they fled to the nearby town and the surrounding countryside, spreading the news as they ran. People rushed out to see what had happened. A crowd soon gathered around Jesus, and they saw the man who had been freed from the demons. He was sitting at Jesus' feet, fully clothed and perfectly sane, and they were all afraid. Then those who had seen what happened told the others how the demon-possessed man had been healed. And all the people in the region of the Gerasenes begged Jesus to go away and leave them alone, for a great wave of fear swept over them. So Jesus returned to the boat and left, crossing back to the other side of the lake. The man who had been freed from the demons begged to go with him, but Jesus sent him home, saying, No, go back to your family and tell them everything God has done for you. So he went all through the town proclaiming the great things Jesus had done for him. Psalm 70, a psalm of David, asking God to remember him. Please, God, rescue me. Come quickly, Lord, and help me. May those who try to kill me be humiliated and put to shame. May those who take delight in my trouble be turned back in disgrace. Let them be horrified for their shame, for they say, Aha, we've got him now. But may all who search for you be filled with joy and gladness in you. May those who love your salvation repeatedly shout, God is great. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Please hurry to my aid, O God. You are my helper and my savior. O Lord, do not delay. Proverbs 12, 4. A worthy wife is a crown for her husband, but a disgraceful woman is like cancer in his bones. And to end, I have a blessing for you that comes from 3 John 1, verse 2. Dear friend, I hope all is well with you and that you are as healthy in body as you are strong in spirit. May Jesus himself lift you up and make you strong. May he heal those hidden areas that surface time and time again. May he bring wholeness and health to your body, mind, and spirit. May he strengthen you and fill you with faith so you'll dare to take the risks he puts in front of you. May you take time in his presence so you'll remember how strong and mighty he is. And may your day be filled with sacred moments that remind you just how precious you are to him. You are so dear to his heart. Love you all. Have a beautiful day.